Risk 5 has been a topic on this channel for quite some time. So far, we mainly used microcontrollers. But now, there is a Raspberry Pi alternative, which is based on a Risk 5 core. It's made by Shenzhen Xunlong, and in the following steps, I will show you what to expect. So, here we have the shipment box, as always, in we go. And here we are. We see the power supply, as always, very thankful for that. And the actual process computer in such a sleeve, as you see it here. So, now it's time to unbox the orange pie. Here the sleeve slips off. Then you get one of these boxes and inside of here we have a cover at the bottom and the actual computer which as you see here is still sealed but probably I just cut into it here. And yes, if you cut cleanly you can reuse this for a few times. And here we have the actual machine already. Here we have the processor, the memory, the wireless module, a 26-pin interface connector, and we see here also a mounting screw for the M2 slot here. Here on the back we've got the usual complement of ports, Ethernet, HDMI, power supply, and the, the USB ports. And here at the bottom, this is Shenzhen Xunlong and I like it very much that they always do this. Another M2 slot, micro SD for booting and a place for an AMMC card. This is the machine. Yes, here in the front we have some camera connectors also and a phone jack and a power button. And this is here for the real-time clock. So if you want to add the real-time clock battery, you can also connect it here, along with the two more special mode buttons. But yes, this is an usual orange pie, very well designed, and yes, the antenna, you can remove it if you want to, and connect a different one to it. So, now, to get started, we go here to the website of the RV2, then we go here to downloads, and here we find the Ubuntu image. And this is the software which we put on the memory card, as always. For the following steps, I'm going to be using my trusty 16GB SanDisk card. And then, to get started, of course, we put this in here, and we see this is a friction fit not a form fit card slot, but given that this is intended purely for local development, it is acceptable. And then of course we do the usual rest of the connections. It's basically my usual good morning setup, gigabit ethernet, HDMI, mouse, keyboard and the power, which we are now going to be plugging in in the back there. And we see here in the front there is a red and there is also a green LED. And on the screen we already see the initialization of the bootloader. Now I have to zoom in. And here we already see that the system is preparing itself to start up. It's showing a lot of things. Now it's resizing the file system. And I'm gonna use this opportunity to modify the camera position. And now we see it's still booting and uh, it's starting up slowly but surely as we see here.
and here we already have the desktop of the thing and we go for show apps and here we have this let me try over there the settings to find out a bit more about what version of the system we are dealing with you see it takes a bit of time to start the settings application And what I see here, we see operating system orange P1.0.0 Noble and we are here on 3.7 gigabytes of memory and here we've got most of the other system settings in more detail as you can see here. And what is for me surprising a little bit is that the system does react sometimes a bit slow. But we see here, now that it's fully started up, it reacts a bit faster. It, it's a weird new desktop, which I don't know yet. But either way, what we do, we go into the Orange Pi config. Uh -huh. Now it wants the password, so we try Orange Pi. And now we get the Orange Pi configuration utility. And the most important thing that we do here is we go into the network options. No, we don't find anything here. We go into the system submodule. We go into SSH here. We have to wait for it to download the SSH. And now we see here allow root login, allow password login. Then we go here for save. And then we go for cancel. And now the system should be ready to go for logging in from the workstation. So now, as always, we have to start to search for our system. This can take a bit of time, but Nmap is much more comfortable than anything else. And here we have the guy, we know his IP, so now we can connect. And now it will always complain a little bit because I use this computer often. So we just do the normal shit. And now we go in. And now we are in here. We will zoom out a little bit that we see it better. And here we see our Linux version and everything. So of course the first thing we're gonna do is always give it an apt. Upgrade. Don't forget to sudo before. <coughs> and yes, here it complains again. So let's try apt get update first. This is of course, we're dealing with a very new uh, system here. So as you see here, we are connecting to Huawei, by the way. But now we see it install these updates. And after the obligatory reboot, we start installing a few funny things.
First we get ourselves iperf and next we get ourselves suspense. Oh oh, and we see suspense is not available. So we have to compile it as per my video on compiling suspense. Or rather, so we think. Because when we order the compile, we get here the error, no support for this architecture yet. As we see here, in particular in the Lua JIT environment. So, Suspens, at least the version which we usually use, doesn't run. And sadly, if we investigate this deeper, we see here there is no support for the RISC-V architecture inside of this as of now. So this is an experience which you will have quite often. As I said, this is still a very early stage of the technology. Be that as it may, next we will return to iperf minus C and we've got here my workstation running the iperf server and now we mesh enter and we see what happens. We see that the workstation has discovered the other side and at least as far as the Ethernet performance is confirmed or is concerned, there is nothing to complain about. It works very, very well, as we see here. Next, we are going to try to get our hands on to stress nug. I mean, stress nug is now not a classic benchmark, but it does get results, as also incidentally does 7-zip, which we're also going to install in a minute. Or so we try. And here we have a little video which shows the thing just idling peacefully on my desktop. And then we can start with a single threaded test like this. And quite incidentally, we can now run another video and we see that during the single core, the temperatures are pretty well in control by and large. And because we're funny, we run it again immediately. And we see very similar values. So this is this. Now, next, we do a normal benchmark like so, which just runs a normal benchmark with all eight cores enabled. And we see now it says I'm now working with all eight threads. And here we have another video. I also saw 58 shortly, but I didn't photograph this so well. But here you see 57, 58, it depends if you go a little closer, well, you see. This is where it can't turn again. And here we have the final results, which you can then compare with your local machine at home. And the next thing we want to do is, we want to find out how symmetric our CPU is. And for this, we are going to use StressNG with just any random CPU bound method. The idea is here not to actually get real results, but to see how it scales with four and with eight cores. 
And yes, in this parameterization, stress nug will take 60 clock seconds, so we need to accelerate the movie a little bit. And here we then get all kinds of complaints. Let's zoom out a little bit. And here we have the number of operations per second for one CPU. Now we repeat this thing with a four. And here we have the result for four. And finally, again, for eight. And here we see for eight, it basically scales by and large, doubled from four. So the eight cores seem to be very, very similar. And we've confirmed this. The next important question is, can we interact with the GPIO port? The answer to this is yes, because we go here to the homepage of Wiring OPI and we see here there is an update of the library for the RV and also for the RV2. So they have GPIO support right outside of the box. And we can make here GPIO read all to find out the GPIO assignment. And then we can make a little measurement if we want to. And for this, we want our usual stupid little test program, which you see it here. We write it out, we exit, we order it to be compiled and then we run it and then we see it running and then it's already time to bring out the oscilloscope and as we see here connecting is made much easier because there are colors showing the functions of each of the pin with the blue ones being GPIOs and we've got the oscilloscope connected already. And then we can just go here and run my favorite little analysis test. As you see here, the LeCroy scope automatically performs the analysis and tells us what it found. And with this, I'm thankful for now. I hope this was interesting. If you have any questions, leave them below and I will try to help. Thank you so much. Bye bye.